update 3, 4, 5, and 6 of motorbiking northern Vietnam is about to start. We're leaving the Hajan Loop and heading to more remote areas with two goals in mind. To the Ban Jok waterfall and get back to Hajan by day 6. Sounds easy enough, right? Well guys, we fell. This is a road warrior's journey. Two newbies on a small 125cc motorbike attempting to conquer obstacle after obstacle. So if you want to see what the real northern Vietnam's all about, this is the video for you. Okay, time to tackle our first mission. That's gonna be a mission, guys. That's gonna be a mission. Slow and steady. Slow and steady. Do you want to drive this part? No! Are you kidding me? <laughs> There's a lot of rocks. Yeah. It must be really hard to build a road here. Hold on. Ah, got it. Heading on 15 of these. Is that how many turns there are? Yeah, it's like known as the path of 15 something like that. So. <laughs> well, there is one. Okay, so this one's a little different. We got loose gravel, loose sand, loose gravel, sand. Woo! Woo! I did that one a little wide, guys, but I got it. Number two done. Going up on number three here. Momentum. Oh, he's slipping. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going to crawl up this. Hold on, hold on. He, didn't, he was going up a little too slow and then I lost my momentum had to stop and then it's difficult balancing everything uh, with my left foot only so what happened was I put my right foot down which is also the back brake I had the front brake on but we started to slip backwards with the front brake and that was that's what that's what you felt right there that stop <laughs> I felt you. I was like, oh, those little that that divot, huh? Yeah. Doop. on that one. Oh, scraped again. <laughs> we bottomed out two or three times on that one. Come on, baby, go. This is full power at one. Let's go, come on, fly, 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 fly. Woo. We almost don't have enough horsepower, guys, to get up this thing. I'm gonna have to make all hundred walk. Hey. <laughs> oh. oh, we got road. We got road. Woo! <laughs> yeah. We got it. <laughs> oh, that was a nightmare. Hell yeah, we did it. Nice. Let's take a view at it, what we conquered. We're going on a hike go see the overpass that we just almost a shit on <laughs> <laughs> for lack of better words about 30 minutes to the top and it's supposed to be a really nice overview of the 15 mountain passes the so switchbacks switchbacks okay yeah i thought it was just a viewpoint but it's actually a little mini hike and it's 30 minutes but it's like this so we're going to be pretty sweaty i imagine All right, through this custom-made door we go. Let me close that. 
I think we just climbed this all the way up. Whew. We're almost there, as expected. It's all up, 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 up. Oh, just right there. She's not too far behind. I'm sure she's breathing just as hard as I am. One switch back on that ledge right there, that should be it. I see the Vietnam flag, which means that's the end of the trail. We made it. The views look so sick from up here too. And I built this little lookout point right by the flag here. It's super cool. And if you want water, if you didn't bring any, he'll sell you some water here. Oh, he has water? Yeah. Cool, huh? That is cool. What a view. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then down one, 15. Ready to head back to the bike? Yeah. Alright, let's head back to our bike. Beautiful view, okay. worth the climb. What? There's a flag in it. Oh, keeps taking lots and lots of photos. She loves this cloud formation mm -hmm. in the background with the road. I kind of like the color of the dirt with yeah. these cliff sides, but I am also drawn to the clouds. Okay, we're done soaking in the views. Our next stop is Kilometer Zero Ho Chi Minh Trail. It's about an hour and a half away. I'm sure we're gonna make a couple stops along the way as things look beautiful with the cloud formations going on today. But that is our next stop. It's gonna be a nice long drive on the scooter, which I'm looking forward to actually, cause it's, I'm really hot. <laughs> This stuff is the worst, huh? Yeah. Because you can really speed wobble your front tire or your back tire out. Oh, she's got a phone call. All right, not too bad. I thought she was a kid, but she's not. She's not, I thought she was a kid too. I tried to copy her and I, I feel like that was a bad move. I, I like it better when I'm actually moving than just totally stop, but. What the hell's going on? They're making moonshine right there. <laughs> It's kind of interesting to see like the worst parts of the road are already being constructed on. So, you know, in a couple years, this whole landscape is going to change. Like this road is going to be pretty nice. And, oh, wow. Look at that. Jesus. Gorgeous. Oh, man. I got to fly the drone here. Wow. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow. That's crazy. Look at this. The view from the side of the road was truly breathtaking. The clouds were quickly moving in and out as the wind was starting to pick up, but looking down at the valley, we saw no traffic, no signs of people, just a couple small houses surrounded by farmland and steep cliffs. And it was at this moment where we truly understood how remote this journey was gonna take us. It's a little bumpy, hold on. Crazy valley. I'm so curious what's up there, but I'm too tired to check it out. Yeah, looks like 
it's gonna be like this for a while. This is a good spot to stop. Okay, we stopped just at the base of the valley floor here of that beautiful village that we passed by. And believe it or not, it is cold and we're gonna put our puffers on. I cannot believe it. The whole time, Alhandra just said that she put hers at the bottom because it was like no way we're gonna use them because we were just sweating hot every single day. Yeah. And here we are. There's Alhandra digging all the way to the bottom of her bag. You never know what the weather here. But looking forward, it looks like it's gonna be pretty darn hazy. Not hazy, fogged out. And I'd rather just stop here where it's safe, a nice open area to put our jackets on, than rather in there we get cold and nobody sees us when we're pulled off on the side of a, a road. So that's my strategy. Chicken is their main thing that they eat, I think. I see chickens everywhere. 
Are you, are you uh, nervous for going the wrong way? From what I can get, it is confusing. All right, I think we made just one wrong turn, so we're gonna head back, but it is super confusing where we're at. I think we're supposed to be climbing that mountain over there instead of climbing this one. This one's gonna go slowly this back. Doesn't wrap around? No? no, it goes this way. the Ho Chi Minh Kilometer Zero Landmark. And it's pretty, it feels pretty special because it was a journey for us. And we were on the Ho Chi Minh Trail for quite a ways to get here. With that said, even though it was such a journey, it was a beautiful and magnificent drive. I loved every bit of it. Even the rain, the fog, it was just a true sense of adventure. Like, started off hot and then it's just, Climbed up, a little bit of rain, a little bit of fog, beautiful rice fields and beautiful limestone rocks. It was just crazy. It's just a crazy day. All Andre had, uh, well, it wasn't her, it was really just Google Maps. It was having issues and Maps Stop Me wasn't loading right. So we were kind of like unsure if we were going the right way or not. We made one mistake, but we didn't go that far on the wrong route for very long, so it wasn't even that big of a deal. And just like in Vietnam fashion, there's tons of Instagram photo spots and other things to do around here. <laughs> yeah. And they charge you for a short tram ride and entry fee to get here. Our shot was we wanted to ride up. Yeah. Right? To kilometer zero. To kilometer zero, but no, they won't let you, so. With that said, if you don't know what the Ho Chi Minh Trail is, it was the major route that they paved to fight during the Vietnam War against the Americans. And it starts in the northernmost part of Vietnam close to China, which is, China is like right over here. And they used to fund and bring supplies through the Ho Chi Minh Trail to the south of Vietnam where a lot of the fighting was, was happening. And uh, it's kind of crazy to actually be here to the start of it. That's the, where we left our bike and got the ticket. This is kilometer zero. She said something like they drop you off here and then you walk this. And then they pick you back up here and then you exit. Okay, we took the tram from kilometer zero to its next stop, which is right by farmland, really. And they have this beautiful water and a walkway that's a loop. So you do a loop, go back to the entranceway, and then they tram you back. Actually, really beautiful. We were going to skip it, to be honest, but I'm glad we didn't. Not what I thought. You thought you were what? I thought we were just coming to see a marker. I feel like I'm in Indiana Jones or something. Yeah, it's beautiful. But yeah, it's a whole park with caves and different things to check out. But we mostly just wanted to see this, this river here. something right now once you pay you take the tram and do all that stuff then you can get back on your bike and you can continue actually to kilometer zero on your bike or the little farmland which we are right now because it's a loop so it's a loop so we're eventually going to connect back to the main road but we thought we were going to have to double back and redo the road that we just did but we didn't have to i was nervous though because there is a cop guarding the entrance of this area and I was like, oh great, am I gonna get pulled over again? But he kind of just stared at me and I just pretended like I really knew what I was doing and I just looked straight ahead and I was like, yeah, I got my international license, I dare you to pull me over. Well, yeah, we're back on the road. I'm glad, I'm happy that we got to do this because this is super cool to just go through these little villages and stuff. All right, let's make light work of this, an hour and a half. 52 kilometers. 52!
this was dry, it wouldn't be bad, but since it's wet, it's very slippery on these tires. Well, guys, we fell. I didn't catch it on camera. So it wasn't any of that issue, not paying attention. Honestly, just climbing up this hill, it's so muddy from the fogginess. The back end just whipped out and I couldn't, I couldn't save it. I tried to brake and it just, whoosh, down we went. <sighs> Luckily, we're both okay. I hit my wrist a little bit, but not bad. And it was muddy, so it's not like we... Is my, is my back all muddy? Your arm is, but uh, both of us went down. Dang it. We got a little bit of mud on the bike. A little bit of scuffs. You did? Just a, I don't know if that was all. Oh, that's there. just like mud. This is all mud. We're gonna have to take it to a wash. Yeah, it's so dirty. <laughs> it's so dirty. <laughs> Anyways, we gotta get back on the road. It's gonna be a tough one getting to, to yeah. camp. That sucks. I don't know how I prevent how I could have prevented that. That inside line is not good. See, that's what I went into, and bam, that's what that's what threw us. I just picked yeah, I just picked the wrong spot. Do you think I was going too fast? I rounded the corner, and then immediately, like as I rounded the corner, and it was a climb up. It just washed out from the back end, and I didn't know what to do. Oh man, that was by far the hardest thing. Okay, we got some regular asphalt back. Thank goodness. Woo. This is what my back looks like from falling. Full of mud. My shoes are muddy. The motorbike's full of mud. Oh, Honda's full of mud. Our bag's not that bad. But we lost one of our really good towels that we'd love to bring on backpacking trips and stuff like that. It wasn't at the fall, it fell out earlier, but we just didn't notice, which I'm kind of bummed out about. Oh, also, if the image is a little messy, it's because the cameras are full of mud too. Oh man, this is a true adventure, I'll tell you guys. You never know what's around the corner. Right when you get super confident, Mother Nature humbles you. Yeah, I'm just starting to get a little wet. Had these on when we fell. Yeah. Ponchos on, we're gonna dress their bags. What seemed at times a journey that we weren't fit to complete, we were exhausted but relieved to see our hostel in the distance. We couldn't believe not only all the beauty we just saw one day, but also all the obstacles we managed to overcome. With my ego humbled by mother nature and full of mud, it was time to wash up, have a bite to eat, and head straight to bed. Day four. Day four. Got some eggs and some toast. We're at a very remote hostel. Also very beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's the name of it there. Nam Mo. And what we're gonna do is eat breakfast. Uh-huh. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna eat breakfast and skedaddle, but check this out. It's like a also like a dog <laughs> rescue place. Look at this. <laughs> hey little runt. <laughs> and what's up, beautiful? So, so cute. There's so many dogs here. My hair's gonna be crazy from now on because my hair size is broken and lost. Oh, yeah. here he is. Here. <laughs> Alright, we're back on the road. Day four has officially started. Another cloudy, beautiful morning. Hello. Bye. Uh, first things first is God's eye. 
second is the giant waterfall at the Chinese border. And that's really the reason why we did six days, because that sucker is so far away that we had to do six days to get to it. It's a bit of a sketchy road from our homestay, and it's not too bad. We were a muddy mess yesterday. Muddy freaking mess. But they had nice hot showers and a pretty decently comfortable bed, right? Slept okay. We let, they have fans above the beds, which is nice to kind of drown out the noise. And they do have private rooms too. This place is absolutely gorgeous. You can really be something. But right now it's very small. Like it's only a couple private rooms. And the rest is like a, a 10 bed dormitory. Still kind of muddy nastiness. Just gonna drive right through that. There's nicer ponds than that. China, no. <laughs> My first look at China. And because China is so close, no drones. No epic drone shots for the waterfall, which I'm kind of bummed out about, but I'm also not trying to go to jail. China's very strict. Everybody's a spy to them. <laughs> Very interesting situation goes on here. On this side here, and we're on Vietnam. Right across this short water channel here is China. And no, we can't go there without visas and all this other stuff. They have a viewpoint, we don't, but they both have boat rides. Just make sure they don't park you in the wrong country. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's kind of surreal that we're here, right? What? It's kind of surreal that we're here. Yeah. Right by the border of China. When we when we first thought we were going to do the Hajiang Loop, we were thinking three days with easy riders and because uh, we weren't sure, we had no experience going in. And then Alejandra said she wanted to see this waterfall. You know, like there's no way you can do it in three days. And then the prices got higher and higher for the easy riders. And then we just said, how long is it just to do it ourselves? We get to this point and they said, you need six days. And that's what started this whole adventure was wanting to see this waterfall <laughs> right here by the Chinese border is what started the Hajar Loop adventure and it's crazy like this is the furthest point that we're gonna reach on our journey and we're here day four I don't think you can go anymore because that's <laughs> China <laughs> that's true there's no more it's the end of the line literally
taking our first stop. We've been at it for an hour. We got an hour left. We're gonna stop and have some coffee here. Take off our wet ponchos. Rest our butts. My butts are really hurting today. Like after 30 minutes, I'm so uncomfortable. This is the biggest town we hit so far. So Alejandro and I were like, hey, we should probably stop here because we don't know what's ahead. We both decided to get a milk tea instead of coffee just because here's the honest truth. When I don't see an espresso machine behind the counter, I usually am not gonna order coffee because I'm like, ooh, it's probably not gonna be good. It's probably gonna be super sugary. If I'm gonna have sugar, I'm gonna have it my way. Hang <laughs> <laughs> out here for 15 minutes or so and get back to the road. We got one hour left. Time to scoot back up and hit the road. the fatigue like I didn't really want to stop too much and like the night shop looked cool but I was like oh, I just don't want to, I want to get to my place and I think part of that is the fatigue of the driving every day we're covering a lot of kilometers a day but I also think weather hat plays a factor too when you see the clouds come in and you know that you're gonna be stuck in rain like this you're like you try to stay optimistic but it is it is kind of a pain to have to suit up and suit down every time you go stop in places and stuff so I think that definitely played a factor in today. Also, I'm just sore and tired. I am just sore, like my butt's sore, my back's tight. It's it's a bit of work being on a scooter for this many days. So we'll see in the end how we feel after six days, if we feel like it was worth it or not. I feel like it's still gonna be a yes, but maybe we'll say, you know, that was, one too many days or two too too many days. Do you have anything else to add? I'm tired. <laughs> Today I can feel that all oh, yeah. very tired. I can feel the fatigue of the last three days built up. Don't build too much. I just need a really long nap. <laughs> <laughs> for it. Woo. So we're at a pub place that's literally right down the street from where we're staying on Hostel. And this place is called Dao Po <laughs> Don Muang. It's a very difficult name. Recommended by the owner of our homestay. They have pho with pork, chicken, or duck at really, really good prices. So they're making the noodles by hand outside, which is cool. It's got me excited. We are crazy hungry and crazy tired, so we wanted to eat first before we shower and relax because once we're showered and relaxed, it's like you really just don't want to leave. I got chicken. I got pork. How's your fun? It's good. It's just, uh, the broth is very light. It's delicious. It's just delicious from what we've been having. But the day four was physically and mentally draining it was the first time we didn't want to do any extra stops on the side of the road but to make up for it we decided to take a nice long walk around Cao Bang and we're glad we did not only is it one of the nicest small cities we've seen in Vietnam but it also shook off any doubts or regrets about the rest of the trip Coffee. It's a franchise, right? 
yeah. seen them all over. We tried two local coffee shops before we ended up on this third one. Um, and they just didn't have uh, espresso makers, and we really want a cappuccino. We had to set up for the franchise, but they give you free tea before you get your coffee, which is pretty cool. And it's really good. It's like vanilla or something. The view is so pretty. Oh, yeah. This town, Cal Bay, it's gorgeous. Just feeds my soul. I'm so starting to look a little straggly here, huh? <laughs> Got a big beard, haven't shaved, my hair is everywhere. He gets so much attention from like his beard, I think. Uh, all just the, stare all at me the men like... just like look at him and they just smile and I, I feel like they're very just, I don't know, this really like brings something out in you and it, they don't see it that much, so they just, they get giddy. <laughs> It's really yeah, actually it's not cute. that common yeah. you see somebody with a beard here, yeah. that's for And there's sure. been some that like touch it. It's so funny. That, yeah, that's awkward. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That's pretty awkward. I let them know. <laughs> <laughs> I let them know. We have an update, a slight change of plans. Since we can't find anything to do or any stops along the way to Bao Lam, and we don't want to just do an entire day of driving just to end up at a destination like we did yesterday, we're going to head south so Balam is northwest we're gonna go southwest and so Hajing is here we're here the plan was originally to go up and over but now we're gonna go down around and under um, and we're the reason why is we want to go to Ba Bay Lake which is a, it looks beautiful on Google and it's one of the landmarks and then they also it's an area that it's a new province that we haven't seen yet, so that's the plan. If it looks super gorgeous there, we're going to spend the night there, and then we'll have a five-hour drive tomorrow to back to Hajjong. But if it looks okay, or if the weather looks kind of crummy, we'll continue driving an hour to two hours west. It'll just be west now, not south, to Nohong, and we'll spend the night in Nohong, which will be about three hours to Hajjong. On the road! Day five. I feel better than day four, honestly. I was super tired yesterday. I feel a little bit more or less rested, a little bit more relaxed. I think it was just fatigue, honestly, is what we're feeling. Yeah, so we're headed to Bombay Lake. It's gonna take us about three and a half hours or so. The weather's a lot nicer today. We have clouds, but they're not as low. They don't look like rain clouds. A bit of fog, but maybe we'll manage not to experience the mist today. Fingers crossed. I really, really like this, this city. I'm not going to call it a town because it's pretty big in perspective of what we see. It's still small, but, but I really like it here. I like the vibe. Last night was a beautiful walk. We walked for about an hour around the river, and that, that's super rare to have a place to just walk ride by nature and not be uh, inundated with scooters and all this other stuff that went on, loud noises and stuff. It was pretty quiet. We got to see people's gardens and their homemade gardens. Vietnamese people have like such a green thumb. Like we saw them at a egg crates, styrofoam boxes, anything that can grow any type of plant. Coming after you, babe. <laughs> Super pretty. We're gonna get back on the road. What a nice stop, huh? Yeah. Two hours left, we've been driving for an hour. Just windy roads through the mountains here, but honestly, the roads have been really, really good. All right, two hours left. <laughs> Saying bye to the water buffalo. Nice little stop there. It did, they kept trying to uh, get to all Honda she was trying to take a picture of the viewpoint, but then the herder lady was like,
Oh yeah, it's like mochi. It's like mochi. Do you mm. eat the leaf? No, not the leaf. Don't. Ow. Mm. <laughs> they are both. We made it to the lake, guys. We made it to the lake. Found a little nice little place to sit. Mmm, mm, that's a tea. Oh. Okay. Bobby. Okay. Bobby tea. Bobby tea. From, from here. here. Yeah. Local. Oh, okay. Uh, name bang. Homestay ew. Oh. Name bang. Yeah. That's the name of this? Name bang? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Good, yeah. good, good. It's, really, oh, it's good. really good. Yeah, I like yeah. it a lot. The tea is delicious. I'm like this. Oh, yeah. They come like that, wrapped in a banana leaf. Yeah, and then you get these inside. And then this is what you get. Very chewy, look. It's like mochi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the inside is some type of paste. What's inside? Oh. Oh. Mmm. Smashed up nuts. Coffee. Of... <laughs> That's what's inside. I actually like the paste inside more than the chewy. Xing chow. Hello. Xing <laughs> chow, hello. This is her restaurant here. She invited us in. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard that a lot. We reached our major landmark of the day, Babe Lake. The ride was easy and the lake was peaceful, not a soul in sight. I'm not sure why that is, but it was nice to enjoy the views without noise or crowds. We opted out of taking a boat ride for the simple fact of having a couple more hours by motorbike to the next town we would be staying at, and figured it'd be wise to hit the road while the weather was in our favor. here we took a smaller route than the normal um, bigger road bigger highway it shaved off they said 15 minutes I don't know if that's true because it's it's narrower and more on the edge so I drove slower so I don't know take it for what it's worth I thought it was a great drive though because we got to get off the beaten path a little bit and check out the smaller villages and get the shock look the whole time like it's cool it's it's more farmland here it's definitely a little warmer but it's still very much jungly as well so the landscape hasn't changed too much but the roads have gotten a little crappier so hopefully they get a little better as we go on and yeah we got about an hour left 30 kilometers so we're making pretty good time actually so i still feel at peace i don't feel restless my butt's not numb so i think we're, we're doing better today than we have been in the last past couple of days so we're gonna get back on the road get to our home state We made it to Nahang. 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 <laughs> One of the two. This area is completely empty, and you can tell it's a new development with the backdrop of the beautiful mountain there, and of course, a sign that lets you know where you're at. <laughs> Just a quick stop and back on the scooter for five more kilometers. Pulled over at a random place. We saw a sign here. Nah. Me? Miggy? Anyways, there's the picture of the broom. Ten bucks a night. Alonzo's gonna go check it out because there's one thing that we've learned about pictures is they can trick you. What happened? Passport. Oh, passport. So every night or afternoon, Alejandro and I try to walk the town 
one to get off the scooter and just stretch our legs but two to just see the, how the locals are living and see what's happening so we're in Nahang or Nahang now and we're just walking a little beautiful path by the river and it's different than Kaobang which is really developed it's a lot less developed here it's a lot more raw on the right side here is the city but on the left side is just kind of farmland and they do a lot of trees trees is the main crop I see planted out here a lot of lumber and also we saw a lot of cows today on the road but yeah we always try to walk 30 minutes to an hour I don't know just to see how they live and get out of our little bubble a little bit and I, I, I really enjoy it mm -hmm. we did it on every single stop right yeah it always amazes me like look it like they just have a green thumb it's <laughs> everywhere they can grow everywhere. they just grow so much stuff for their own to sell it's amazing like everywhere there's plants and fresh vegetables it's true yeah i like this town you don't see most westerners you can tell <laughs> hello where are you from i'm from california yeah what's your name my name is i what's your name my, my name is alejandra oh hello what's your name hello my name is matthew nice to meet you what's yeah. your name my name is ang Aang. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Aang. Are these your friends or your brother or sister? No. Hi. Watch your Hello. Two my Matthew, Two what's your, your name? Yeah. What's your name, Hung? What's your name? Hung. Hung? Yeah. Nice to meet you, Hung. My name is Matthew. <laughs> You're sweaty. <laughs> your name? What's your name? <laughs> I'm Matthew. What's your name? Uh, her name is Joop. 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 Yeah. Joop. <laughs> nice to meet you, Joop. Nice to meet you, Hung. Where you at? Uh, Aang. Oh, uh, exploring. We're, we're just walking. Ah. Oh. Get exercise. <laughs> Crispy pork. Oh, that looks good. Yummy. Mm, extra crispy. Just wait. No. Wait till we. Mm. Ah, we need to find some rice and some utensils. Oh my gosh. That is fire. All right, we found a place to eat. We ordered this. They do sell it here, but um, we didn't know that. It just looks so delicious from the street vendor. So we ordered steamed rice, some mixed greens, steamed, and I think that's a soup. I'm not sure. Alejandro's already digging in. It actually was really nice of them to um, set us up like this because we just ordered just the steamed rice because we felt really bad, you know, bringing outside food into a restaurant. It's like a no-no, but she just grabbed it from Alejandro's hand and was like, sit down, sit down, sit down. And we're like, okay. So it was, they're really kind. We got lucky, guys. We got really <laughs> lucky. Like, this sauce here with white rice and the, the pork that we got, the crispy pork, it's so good. It's probably one of my favorite things we had on our loop. And it just happened by chance. <laughs> asking people from store to store to store where we can buy white steamed rice. The first store wanted to sell us uncooked rice. <laughs> and like had it in their hand and I was like, no, no, we want it cooked. And they just kept pointing this and we, we got lucky. <laughs> I'm happy. So good. Cheers. Mm. Day six, our last day. Wow. On the journey. That's crazy. That's crazy, right? We went by fast. I did. And we really only, in my opinion, had one rough day. Yeah. And it wasn't the day that we fell off the bike. No. It was it was day four. We yeah. were really tired. Day, day four, four I was, was like hard. I was so exhausted. And I was thinking in my head, I didn't say it out loud, but I was thinking, did we do too many days? Yeah. Like was four days enough? Yeah. Is it gonna be like this for the next two days? Yeah. But thankfully, day five, the sun poked out a little bit. Yeah. The yesterday was passed. easy. Yeah, yesterday felt like, really easy. It felt like we we actually did more kilometers. Yeah. But it felt shorter. I yeah, it was our, our distance was longer mm -hmm. than the other the day before. Mm -hmm. But it just felt just so much smoother. Mm -hmm. I think it was fatigue and weather. Weather plays a factor. Yeah. Having to drive in the rain. And, not being able to see and stuff like that. Yeah. With that said, I'm glad day five 
felt easy, kind of rejuvenated us. We yeah. made it to this town, and I'm going to call this town, Nahang, the friendliest place in Vietnam. I think so. They were so friendly yesterday to us when yeah. we got here. It's by far the most friendliest town we've visited in our entire journey. Not just the hygiene, motorbike stuff, but all of Vietnam. It's super nice here. Yeah. Very accommodating. And it was the perfect place to come without a plan. Yeah. We had no plan. No we didn't place have to a stay. hotel or anything. So all in total, we did four different provinces by motorbike. And if I don't get a synopsis at the end because we have to catch a bus to Sapa, I will tell you now, it's we were both talking about it. It was the highlight of our entire Vietnam trip, just being free, being out in the open. Day three for me went to the villages and all the different valleys and the mountain passes and just the danger of it. It was just, it was just a true sense of adventure <laughs> for me. And the weather changes from clear to sunny to foggy and then rainy and then it just was so... Just and then falling. And then falling <laughs> and then the mud. The first time experiencing super slippery mud and me thinking, are we going to be able to get through this pass? Through this pass? Yeah. I was literally was thinking... It was a tiny like, pass, but it was a pass. I was like, maybe we're going to have to turn back. It, I don't know, just looking back on that, it just feels like, I know it's a little bit dangerous, but it feels like a true sense of adventure, mm -hmm. which is kind of rare. Yeah. So that was that was worth it right there. That one day of chaos <laughs> <laughs> was worth it. hurting and my legs are numb. I'm going to take a little break here just to stretch out. Starting to feel a little restless on the bike, so. Show your shoes. Look at that. That's just from road kick up. Oh yeah, even the back of your sock. Is it wet too? Here's the back of our bike. It's just because the road's been kind of wet the whole time, but essentially because her feet go here, so it's kicking up stuff. Maybe with the hazmat suit, it'll help. We're back, guys. We did it. We're back in Hajong. That one. We're gonna get some coffee. Hopefully, a proper coffee. Oh man, that last bit was just a grind. Not much to see, not much entertainment. It was like the only section where I can probably like just dole my brain out. It was all kind of flat, not much turns. And I was going like 70, 80 kilometers an hour just zooming through. But we're back. We made it back safely. It feels so good. We did it, guys. Six days on the road, we survived. <laughs> Ooh, what a journey, what a mission, honestly. Thank you. Yeah, that was crazy. That was crazy. Yeah. That was one of our biggest adventures yet, for sure. Mm -hmm. And due to six days without um, an easy rider or with in a group where the rider's in front. Right. To do it completely on your own with little to no experience is pretty adventurous, I think. Or research or research. <laughs> the reason why we didn't plan too much is because we thought we were gonna do Easy Rider. Right, we, we just show up. But then everything changed when uh, we decided to do the waterfall. Yeah. And then I was just stubborn after doing the one Easy Rider from Hoi An to Hoi. I was like, this is really not for me. <laughs> I don't really like being on the back of the bike. I'd rather be in control. But I will say this, because a lot of people are gonna ask, is it dangerous? And I think like yes and no definitely is dangerous, but not in the sense of what I thought like, as far as the road conditions. When I thought dangerous, I thought it was because the roads were going to be in such bad shape. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is it good? 
Yeah. Mm. So back to what I was saying. The roads are in a lot better condition than I thought. And there are some sections that are very sketch, but if you just put it in first gear and put your legs down and just try to navigate it very slowly, you could probably get through it. There's also a lot of nice roads. I would say 80% or 85% are nice roads. Yeah. With 15 to 20% being really, really bad roads. But you can go off the beaten path and you can go on the side of a dang farm on a hill if you wanted to. Yeah. If you're that adventurous. But those roads are just absolutely awful. We did a bit of both. Main roads. I wouldn't say stay on the main roads all the time because you might get a little bored. We did a little bit of main roads, a little bit of side roads back and forth depending on how we felt for my skill level. Yeah. <laughs> I would say the most dangerous part is Vietnam has a set of rules that are not enforced by police or any government bodies or anything like that that you need to know or else it gets very dangerous. There's a hierarchy. First is the person that's walking or on a bike. They are kind of at the lowest. They have to look out for everybody. Just one step above, I would say, is the scooter, motorbike people. Yeah. And you have to look out for everybody. It's up to you. So with that said, there's a lot of things that are above you that you can try to force your way or honk at them, but they will not move because this is the unwritten rule. Mm -hmm. If a car or a truck or a SUV or anything bigger than a scooter comes around a corner, they have the right of way and it's up to you to get the hell over. They're not going to slow down. They're just going to honk and continue forward. And at the very last second, they might slam the brakes if you're about to collide into them. But by then, it's probably too late. <laughs> and so, and that's the same is true with cars and small SUVs. Like when a semi truck comes, they're going to take the entire lane, and it's up to the car to move over. And these are these are the unwritten rules yeah. on the road. But yeah, that's it. That's the Hanjiang Loop, plus three other provinces in six days. I don't feel like we need any more. I feel like that was appropriate. No, I think enough. it's appropriate. We're gonna sit here and enjoy the last bits of our it's coconut so good. coffee. It's so good. Get a coconut coffee. They're so good here. Um, and return our bike, and then we have a bus heading to Saka, which is like six hours. So. It's our last stop in Vietnam. We still got a long day, even though the route and the trip is officially over. We got a lot more to do still today, so we're gonna get ready for that. <clears throat> See you guys. Bye.